Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Art. In this episode of From Scratch, we're going to be taking a look at writing uh, code for uh, convolution to run on the GPU uh, in CUDA, right? And we're also going to talk about constant memory. So let's go ahead and make an example. We'll call it convolution.cu. We'll start out by giving it a comment. So this program computes 1D convolution on the GPU using constant memory. Right. And then, of course, who's it by? By Nick from Coffee Before Arch. Okay, so again, we'll start out like we always do with some boilerplate stuff, so our main function, and then we can even define our kernel. Right. So this is what every single thread will run. Global void doesn't, so it doesn't return anything, and we'll just call it convolution. Okay, and we'll start out typically how we do, we'll set a problem size. So in this case, we're doing 1D convolution. So we'll have a 1D convolutional mask that we're gonna sweep over our uh, uh, a 1D array, right? So um, set the input array size, right? So in this case, we'll say int n is equal to one, shift it over 20 times, right? So this is the exact same as two to the 20 uh, elements, right? Uh, and then we can go ahead and set the size of this in bytes because we're going to have to allocate memory. So we can just do that ahead of time. So we'll say size t uh, bytes is equal to n times size of an int, right? So this will do a convolution on integers. Uh, the next thing we can do is we can allocate some memory. So allocate um, space for our input and output. So basically what we'll do is we'll allocate space for an input array, then uh, we'll allocate space for an output array that will store the result of convolution. So here we'll do uh, input, our int pointer to input, one to output, and then we'll go ahead and use CUDA malloc managed to use CUDA unified memory, and we'll pass it the pointer to input, the size and bytes that we want to allocate that we've calculated ahead of time as bytes, and then we'll do the same thing for output. Okay, so now we've allocated our memory. The next thing we need to do is initialize it, right? Or at least initialize our input. So initialize our input array. So here we'll just write a little function called init array, and it will take a couple things, right? So we'll just take a pointer to the input and the number of elements. And then we can go ahead and write that function up here. So initializes an array with random numbers and then we need some random numbers so we'll get some okay random numbers from the c standard library right so c standard lib and then that allows us to use rand right so then we actually have to define our function so void init array and we'll pass it like i said two things the pointer to the input or we can just leave it general and just say a and the number of elements in and then here we can just see for int i is equal to zero, i is less than n, i plus plus, so for every single element in the array, we'll assign it a random number, right? So equals to rand. And then we can just set this equal to rand mod 100 or something. So this will just be random numbers from zero to 99 inclusive, right? So typically you'd be reading in some kind of data and then you'd be doing a convolution over it. Because this is just for a kind of a functionality test, we can just go ahead and just random numbers between zero and 100, non-inclusive. Um, okay, so we've initialized our array. Um, the only thing we have left to do is start talking about our mask, right? So a convolutional mask, it's also called a kernel in the more mathematical sense, but because that term is overloaded, right? Uh, because the function that we launch on the GPU is also called a kernel, typically it's called, uh, in GPU programming, it's called uh, the convolutional mask. Now. Like I said earlier, we're going to be using constant memory, right? So this is something that's not going to change. So we can define it ahead of time. So first we'll say define uh, mask length, right? And we can say maybe the convolutional mask is seven. So basically what we do for every single element is we sweep the convolutional mask over that element and then we sum up all those values. So here, right, we go ahead and say mask length is equal to seven and then we can allocate constant memory, right? In order to do this, we just do uh, constant, right? And then we can give it a name, right? Or first a type, int, we'll call it mask, and it will have mask length of elements, right? And so this is something, this is a symbol, this mask right here, 
this will be visible inside of our kernel, right? So we don't need to pass it in as an argument. This exists on the GPU, right? Uh, just like anything that if we did CUDA malloc, just like that exists on the GPU, this exists in constant memory on the GPU. Okay, so uh, the next thing we have to do though is we have to, you know, initialize our mask on the uh, CPU side, right? So we have to set up what those are going to be. Um, like I said, we can't directly do that um, uh, on the GPU, right? Or we can't directly do it with mask because mask only exists on the CPU. So here, what we'll do is we'll say um, allocate space for the mask on the host. And then we can just say int, you know, pointer mask is equal to new int and then mask length of elements, right? And then we can just call uh, uh, init array on mask and then mask length of elements. So now we've initialized uh, our mask. Uh, the only thing left to do is to copy it into constant memory. So to copy it into constant memory, we'll use something that we haven't really seen before, which is CUDA mem copy to simple, right? So there's there's a number of things, right? So if we use CUDA unified memory, right, with CUDA malloc managed, uh, that memory will automatically get paged over uh, to the GPU whenever it gets access on the GPU and vice versa. If the CPU accesses it, it will get paged back over to CPU. Uh, because we've allocated space on the GPU directly, right, and we're not using something that's paged, so constant memory isn't paged, we have to directly copy it. So copy the mask to the GPU. And uh, for normal uh, memory for on the GPU, we do CUDA mem copy. We can still do that here, but it's easier to just use uh, the interface of or the API CUDA mem, oops, mem copy to symbol, right? And this just says I'm going to copy to a symbol, right? Because we have a symbol, mask, right? Not just a pointer. We have the name of the variable, right? Mask. So we'll copy into mask whatever is in our local version of mask right here. And then how much do we have to copy? Well, it's just the size of the mask. So it'll be the length of the mask times the size of an integer, right? Because it's seven integers in this case. Um, yeah, seven integers. Okay, so that's all we need to do to get the mask over. So now we're ready to set up our grid that we're going to launch and launch our kernel, right? So here we'll go ahead and do, uh, right? So we'll uh, set our CTA and grid dimensions, right? So here we'll just have int threads is equal to 512, right? So um, we, have, we always have a number of choices when we're setting up our grid as to what we want our threads to do. Do we want, you know, multiple threads to all contribute to one solution? Or do we want to have each thread compute a single element? So in this case, we'll have every single thread compute just one element in our final output array. Uh, and in this case, we can just set 512 threads per thread block. So int blocks is equal to, you know, if n is evenly divisible by threads, we would just do n divided by uh, threads. Uh, in case it's not, we can do some padding here. So we can just do n uh, plus threads, oops, minus one divided by threads. And this just makes sure that uh, if we launch, say, 513 threads, or rather 513 uh, elements that we want to compute on, uh, if we divide that by threads, right, because we have this padding here, we'll make sure to launch two thread blocks. Now, granted, 511 of, fi of the 512 threads in the second thread block will be used, and we'll have to take care of that in the kernel, but we need to make sure we're at least launching the minimum number of threads we need. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and launch our kernel. So we can just launch, oops, L-A-U-N-C-H-R kernel. So here we'll just call convolution with our parameters, the amount of blocks we're going to launch, the threads per block. We're not doing dynamic, uh, dynamically allocated shared memory, and we're also not using multiple different streams, so we can leave those empty. Uh, we also have to remember that kernel launches are asynchronous, so we don't want our program to exit before the kernel is done. So we have to call CUDA device synchronize, which makes sure that all the previously launched things to the GPU are done uh, by the time that uh, we move past that line of code. And then we'll just return zero at the very bottom. So now we can work on fixing convolution, right? So we can work on uh, what are we going to pass in? Well, we're going to pass in an input array, right? So in pointer input, we're going to pass in an output array. So that's where we're going to store output. 
and then we're going to pass in um, the number of elements, right? So int n. And what we don't have to pass in is our mask, right? Because mask is already here, right? So this is a symbol that uh, the GPU already knows about now. And we don't need to pass in our mask length because uh, it will just get inserted wherever we put mask length um, in because the compiler knows what mask length value is, right? It's seven, right? It's a preprocessor macro. Um, okay, so what can we do now? So just like with any kernel, we calculate a thread ID. So every single thread will execute the exact same code. The way you differentiate them is by which thread they are. So we'll calculate the global thread ID. And this will just be block, oh, we'll say int TID is equal to block ID x dot x times oops, block dim dot x plus thread ID x dot x. Right, and this is just saying, okay, block ID x dot x times block dim dot x. This just says, uh, what's the starting thread for my thread block globally? So for thread block zero, in this case, it'll be zero. For thread block one, it will be 512. For thread block two, it'll be 1024, etc. Okay, so now we know which thread we are. Then we have to do some boundary checks, right? So we need to make sure that this thread is mapped to an element in our output. So if we launch in threads, right, zero to in, uh, TID is equal to n minus one or valid. Anything uh, greater than or equal to n will be past the end of the array that we passed in. So we'll go ahead and do if TID is less than n, right? So those will be the valid threads. Then we can start calculating some values. So we'll have this radius is equal to um, mask length divided by two, right? And this is just saying, uh, this is just going to help us with how we're going to sweep this mask over the elements. So if you think of our mask being uh, index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So this is seven elements. What the radius is just going to say is how many elements are on each side, right? So here we've got three in the very center, and there's three elements on each side. If the mask was going to be an even number, we'd have to handle this differently because there is no center element. Uh, but in this case, we've got an odd mask, so we'll just handle this case. right? So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to align the very edge of this uh, mask with the first element, right? and then we'll just sweep it over, right? and we'll multiply and add. Okay, so... Uh, now we've got our int radius. Uh, and the second thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and do, um, let me get rid of this as well. Okay. And then we'll calculate a start, right? So we're going to start at a position. Um, and the reason why we have to calculate this is because we're gonna check against this later. So our start will be equal to our, uh, whatever our TID is, minus the radius, right? because we're basically going to shift it over so that the mask is starting at the very beginning. Um, or rather, that the mask is going to be uh, centered around that element, right? Uh, so in the case of the first element, um, the very center of it, half of it will be hanging off the array. The other half will be at the very beginning of the array, at the very end of the uh, array that we're doing convolution on. The center element will get centered around the element we're doing convolution on. So half of it will be hanging off the end of the array. So we need to make sure that uh, of two conditions, we need to make sure that start is not before the beginning of the matrix or rather, uh, yeah, it's not before the beginning of the matrix and that start is not after the end of the matrix. Right? And we'll just do that with another if statement here. So here we'll just do um, if, uh, or rather we'll start with a for loop, right? So we'll do for int i is equal to zero, i is less than uh, mask length i plus plus, right? So basically what we're gonna do is for every single element is we're going to multiply whatever the corresponding, uh, where the mask is um, with whatever is currently at that spot in the array and we'll sum all those products together. And so here's where we have to do those checking to make sure that you know, because our start is TID minus radius, and then it's going to end up being whatever start is plus mask length. We need to make sure it's not hanging off the end of the array. We'll do two checks. So if we're actually going to accumulate some kind of result, we need to make sure that um, uh, start plus I, right? That has to be uh, greater than or equal to whatever, uh, or greater than or equal to zero. So it has to be at least starting at the very the zeroth position of the array. Uh, 
so a valid index. And then we also need to make sure that start plus i is less than n. Right? So we need to make sure that whatever we're multiplying isn't off the end of the uh, array. And then we'll have a temp is equal to zero here because we're going to be accumulating a partial result. So every single time we'll just into temp, we'll say temp plus equals whatever, uh, we can just index mask first. So mask of whatever i is. So this will be zero through uh, six, right? Uh, index that is, or uh, how many elements is it? Yeah, seven elements, so zero through six. And then we'll multiply this by whatever the corresponding index is in our array, right? So this will be times uh, input of, uh, and then this will be start plus i, right? And that's why we have to make sure that start plus i is greater than zero and it's less than n because we can't access off the edge of the array. Okay, and then the only thing left to do here, now that we've got all these checks in, let's go ahead and put some comments here. So iterate over the length of the mask. Check if we are off either edge of the array and then here accumulate each product, right? And then we'll just write back the result after this uh, for loop. So here we'll just say output of TID because we match, matched each TID with an output element will be equal to whatever temp is. Right? And so here we'll just say write back the result. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for our kernel. Let's make sure we've got everything done. It looks like we forgot, oh, we forgot to fix our call site. All right, so let's pass in our input, output, and uh, in elements. That should fix our call site. Okay, so before we compile it and run it, let's go ahead and just run through the code and see what it's doing. So we're allocating for, or first we're setting the number of input elements to be two to the 20. Then we're allocating uh, our input and output using CUDA unified memory. We're initializing it with some random numbers. Then we're going to set up whatever our mask is on the host. We'll initialize our convolutional mask. Then we'll copy this over into constant memory using CUDA mem copy to symbol. Our uh, constant memory is set up here with this prefix of underscore underscore constant underscore underscore and then mask and then we set it equal to mask length right so this will be this already exists on the GPU so we don't need to worry about passing it in like we do these other pointers to unified memory. Then we go ahead and set up our grid size so we set up uh, you know 512 threads per thread block and then we want uh, in div threads thread blocks. Um, in this case, we want to make it a little bit more flexible so that it can handle arbitrary input data, or rather arbitrarily sized input data, so not just multiples of 512. We launch our kernel using blocks threads as our uh, input, uh, our launch parameters, and then we pass in our inputs. We call CUDA device synchronized just because um, uh, kernel launches are asynchronous, so um, before the kernel's done, our program could exit, so we don't want that to happen. And then we go to our kernel. We make sure that we correspond to a valid element. We calculate our radius. We could do this on the host as well if we wanted to. Then over here, we just iterate over the length of our mask. We check to make sure that we're not reaching over, you know, before the zeroth element or after or equal to the nth element. We make sure we're not off either side of the array. And then we accumulate a partial uh, these products in here before writing it back. So let's go ahead and compile this. Right, and we'll do nvcc convolution dash o convolution and we can run it and we can profile it as well right so you see that here's our kernel convolution takes about 3.299 milliseconds um, and then you see our unified memory transfers here so why do we actually want constant memory so we want constant memory i think like i said before because uh, we want to have some locality with this mask because the mask is staying constant and every single thread will be accessing the same elements of the mask. If we put it in normal memory, it could go into the L1 data cache, but we already have all the input elements going into the L1 data cache. So we could, you know, end up with a lot of misses there. If we put it into constant memory, the first time it gets loaded, it will be brought up to the constant cache and then everyone else uh, will basically get a 100% hit rate in the constant cache after that. So it's separate from the L1 data cache. Why do we care about things like convolution? Well, it's very common in things like machine learning workloads. And this is a decent example of, you know, for basic optimization, right? Using constant memory.
So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, feel free to check out any of this stuff at github.com slash coffee before arch. We've got our CUDA programming series. We've got all the different repositories for all the series I do, like C++ programming, some parallel programming stuff. All right, so here's CUDA programming, where we've got some more in-depth concepts covered for optimizations for things like sum reduction. And we have, you know, five different versions of uh, convolution in here as well, from 1D convolution with constant memory to 2D convolution here with constant memory. Like I said, it's going to do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.